Hey everyone, Jack from the Cardboard Herald here, and today we're doing our additional thoughts and review Q&A for our Scythe, the Wind Gamut expansion review. For those of you who don't know, we do this podcast, TCBH Reviews. Well, we do a bunch of podcasts, but in TCBH Reviews for a long time now, we've been doing these more conversational additional thoughts and Q&As where we kind of get into the making of the review and then answering any questions that came up as part of the discussion and posting it and you know interacting with people on social media and that's what we're doing here and this will actually be the back end of our tcbh reviews episode for the wind gambit so let's dive into it first off this was a really interesting review to do because uh, we have only done a couple expansion reviews in video format so far and uh, to date we had the catacombs expansions which need a little bit more visual representation some interaction on the table but the scythe uh, stuff has to this point all been in written form the, not only the base game but also the uh, first expansion invaders from afar those have been written and in my old written expansion format or i guess my still written expansion format what i do is i have this really short concise boom here's what's new, boom, here's what's cool, boom, should you get it or should you not? And I really dig that format. It's, it's quick, it's snappy, it's to the point, and more importantly, it doesn't just cover all kinds of stuff about the base game that you already know and you don't need to see anything. If you are reading the expansion review or watching the expansion review, in theory, you should have all the context you need to just evaluate the expansion on its own. And that's a little harder to do because when you're doing a video review, you want to showcase everything, but you still want to keep it specific to that expansion. I think I did a pretty good job. It's shorter than most of our base game reviews for uh, certainly some of our bigger base games. We try to hover right about the 10 minute mark for a base game. A really big one might go like uh, 12 to 14 minutes, especially if it's something that has like a huge history, like our Dragon Dice review. But anyway... So that was kind of the challenge there, and I think that for the most part we succeeded. Um, one of the neat things about that review that I had a lot of fun doing is it was the first time that I actually went on location, which just means I went to my dad's condo here in Juneau, Alaska, and went onto his porch because he has a very high elevated porch. He's on the top upper echelon of a condo, and I could just hang out and do little pew, 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 type of things but let's dive into your questions here so side the wind gambit chris matson emailed in and asked would you include this in every game and which expansion would you get first those are great questions chris so first off would i include these airships in every single game that i play from now on and kind of the the standby answer that a lot of people have for many expansions is with experienced players, yeah. And, and that's what I do here. I play this with experienced players. For new players, I'd probably steer clear of the expansion just because you have elements in the airships that you wouldn't have the context to really understand how useful they are until you've played the game, until you've gotten the basic rhythm and cadence of Scythe. And the same thing is true for the game ending condition. For the most part, I think I would stick to teaching with just the base game itself. Scythe is kind of counterintuitive in a lot of ways, and there's a lot to contend with wrapping your brain around uh, how it kind of flows. The basic functions of the game are not what the minis might give you the impression of how the game works is. And the awesome airships, likewise, while super duper cool, I would keep them as the carrot on the stick of if you like this game, then check out this awesome stuff that we get to do. Now, Chris also asked, which expansion would you get first? Also a great question. Now, this, again, is going to be kind of like a caveat answer. You know, I'm not going to have something that's real simple and black and white for you. Uh, basically, what it comes down to is, do you want more of the same or do you want to change up side? And so if you wanted more of the same, which is probably what my first instinct would be, because I like both the 
expansions. I reviewed both expansions. I recommended both expansions, and I like Scythe a lot too. But if I had to pick one, I would go with Invaders from Afar first because I'm the type of person who likes seeing more different stuff like more asymmetry more factions more clans you know i'm the type of person who in dungeon crawls i want to see all of the different uh classes and races and all that kind of stuff and the same is true here i would like to have the two uh additional factions albion and uh togawa i believe it's togawa tokugawa togawa the shogunate you know uh the pinkish purplish pieces uh and they are awesome both of those factions are very cool and i would go with that route first if you were like me now i don't think that scythe is actually functionally missing any factions even though they're printed on the board and it's apparent that they're coming down the road if you don't have this expansion it doesn't feel like you're actually missing a, a gob full of content uh, and so the game is perfectly functional on its own and if you want to actually change up side like if you have kind of an issue with not having enough options at your disposal not having enough ways of kind of aggressively interacting with your opponent that isn't super scary like combat is inside uh, or you just want to have some way of dealing with the uh, thing that I mentioned in the review itself that the game kind of ends a little abruptly sometimes and it can be kind of surprising and sometimes anticlimactic where someone just gets their final star along with dispersing all their dudes and all of a sudden they won the game in one fell swoop and you're like ah geez man that can be crushing well this expansion, the Wind Gambit, deals with a lot of that through the end game tile thingies. And I would recommend that if that is a sticking point for you, then give this expansion a shot. Uh, ultimately, like I said, I like them both. Uh, but for me personally, in my taste, I would go Invaders from Afar first, then Wind Gambit, both good. Now, the next question I had here was from Mayo Warlord on Reddit. Awesome username. <laughs> He, uh, he, or she, I shouldn't assume here, Mayo Warlord said, Great video, super side question. How do you feel about Alhambra and Kingdom Builder? I saw you have a big box for each. And I do, right up here. Yeah. And it's kind of not really something I anticipated it in uh, talking about in this expansion review Q&A session, but you know what? You add Q's, I have A's. So Kingdom Builder is one of my favorite games. It is one of those games that I don't think I will ever get rid of. I love the kind of infinite combination nature of it. I love that it's kind of puzzly, abstract, but at the same time has a gorgeous theme. Uh, I think it's really kind of a brain burner. I love Kingdom Builder, and that's a game that I will play over and over again. And we have a review on our site. In fact, the Cardboard Herald launched with our Kingdom Builder review as one of our original four reviews and was the first review that I ever wrote for a board game as part of Could I Do This? And I ended up doing this. Now, the second part of that is Alhambra. I've played it once. I have a friend, Dan, Hi, Dan, who ended up giving me a copy of Alhambra for reasons that are too grand to get into here. He ended up with two copies of Alhambra Big Box, and he decided to give me one, which is awesome. We got it recently. We've had so many games sitting around that we needed to play that we haven't gotten a chance to play it again. I like it so far. It's a little bit more... Uh, abstract and dry, I would say, than Kingdom Builder. I, I think Kingdom Builder is the better of the two, but I think it's interesting. It's on my shelf. I want to play it more. I'm probably going to make a point of playing it two or three times in the next month to really kind of dig in, maybe get a review up soon uh, of the base game itself, certainly, and hopefully do like kind of a review of the big box, which I haven't done yet. Uh, but that's kind of what's going on with Alhambra. So read some other people's reviews, wait for our review, and check out Kingdom Builder and our review of Kingdom Builder. So thank you so much, Mayo Warlord, for asking those questions. Now, if you have any questions about any reviews that we write, go ahead and post them on to the YouTube comment section. You can send us a contact on the Cardboard Herald website, www.cardboardherald.com, on the contact link. And bottom line, 
if you want to help support us, you want to help this grow, you want to see more of this kind of conversational style thing, because I'm still trying it out on video form to see if it works out, if it's something that people respond to and like, then be sure to let us know and share, subscribe, all that stuff really helps us know that this is some more stuff that you'd like to see and that you want to support us in continuing to spread our cardboard heraldness all over the board game internet. So thank you so much for watching. I've been Jack and you keep on gaming.